wonderful song it is so true there's something about the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus yes Lord there is deliverance in the name of Jesus there is healing there whatever you need is in the name of Jesus yes salvation that is why we are here this morning because God touched our hearts and we accept it what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful name, the name of Jesus. God bless everyone for coming out this morning. I hope you brought your praise with you. In fact, you should always have that with you anyway, but we thank God for another week, another day, another Sunday. God has brought us together to fellowship. I just love and enjoy the fellowship, seeing all the faces and the names God is good and he's worthy of his praise. Thank you so much, Dr. D, for the song selections and touching our hearts. God bless you, hon. We're going to turn this over to our Pastor John. I'm going to get ready for our slides. God bless. Amen, amen, and amen again. Good morning to each and every one of you for once again joining us in another virtual service at Mount Moriah Community Church. God is good and his mercies endureth forever. I know you got that message a little late, uh, Sister D, but I wanted to hear that again. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I remember that song uh, from a, a long time ago, and uh, I thank God for it, how it has ministered, I know, to me already, just uh, uh -huh. listening to the comfort of Jesus and what those words mean, amen? And as we have come together once again on another Sunday morning, thank God for each and every one of you. I pray that as you have come, you come with a praise on your lips and a heart filled with joy because God has got something special for you. And he wants you to take it back home with you before you go. Amen. 
The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Habakkuk 2 and 20. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Surely he died on Calvary. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice. Right now, we're going to go into our announcements. Welcome, first time visitors and special guests. Introduce yourself in the chat box and join us for our after service fellowship. It's that time of year again to gear up for another exciting school year. So as you head back to school, we're praying for all of you students, teachers, parents, and leaders for a successful 2021-2022 school year. If you have specific prayer requests, please speak to our First Lady Sheket after service. Lord, we're having some technical difficulty. I do believe First Lady got kicked off. Are you back, First Lady? Okay, you're muted. This is what happens with Zoom in the upper room, y'all. Hey ladies, not only are you blessed, but you are women of favor. Join our Mount Moriah Women's Group. Coming soon, contact Sister Gail Pinkney for more information at 803-318-4896. Would you like to be included in our updated church directory? Please contact First Lady Sheka at 631-617-0981 for more information. What is Bible study and why is it important? Find out all the answers to your godly questions at our Bible study group every Wednesday on Zoom at 7 p.m. Register for our upcoming new session with our First Lady Shekin. Want to learn more about the announcements you've heard today? Email us at mtmcc7 at aol.com. Thank you for listening to our announcements. Now, enjoy the rest of the service. First Lady, you're still muted. Oh, my. Well, as I was about to say, I thank God for our announcements. And there is a lot more that's happening here at Mount Moriah Community Church. All right, stay tuned. Stay tuned, as the announcements had said. Right now, we're going to have our scripture reading by our Elder Roy Stewart. Good morning, Elder Stewart. Good morning, Sister Jackie and the Mount Moriah Church. I'll be reading to you this morning from the book of Judges, the seventh chapter, verses one through seven. Jerubbabel, that is Gideon, his other name, and his army got an early start 
and went as far as the spring of Herod. The armies of Midian were camped north of them, down in the valley beside the hill of Mori. The Lord then said to Gideon, there are too many of you. I can't let all of you fight the Midianites, for then the people of Israel will boast to me that they save themselves by their own strength. Send home any of your men who are timid and frightened. So 22,000 of them left and only 10,000 remained who were willing to fight. But the Lord told Gideon, there are still too many. Bring them down to the spring and I will show you which one shall go with you and which one shall not. So Gideon assembled them at the water. There the Lord told him, divide them into two groups. Divide by the way they drink. In group one will be all the men who cup the water in their hands to get it to their mouths and lap it like dogs. In group two will be those who kneel with their mouth to the stream. Only 300 of the men drank from their hands. All the others drank with their mouths to the stream. I will conquer the Midianites with those 300, the Lord told Gideon. Send all the others home. Amen. 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 Right now, we're going to prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer um, by our elder Rhonda Sheckett. Good morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, First Lady, Thank little you, sis. We truly give honor and proper praise da, 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 and glory to God for one more Sabbath day, one more Zoom service. Yes. Oh, for Mount Moriah Community Church. Oh, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, what more can we do but praise, ah, da, 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 praise you, praise you, praise you. Yes, and Lord. ask your continued blessing upon us to bring glory and honor and praise to your most holy and Hallelujah. righteous name. Yes, We're so, ah, da, 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 so grateful for all of what you are doing with our services, so grateful you, for our prayer list, so grateful for your manifestation, oh, Father God, in deliverance, healing, Praise setting you. free, providing yes. with jobs, and providing, providing, oh, Father God, with skills so they can get yes. jobs, oh, Father God. We are so grateful and honored today. Thank Lord, you. we can do nothing without you. We recognize this, and we praise and applaud you for it. Continue, Lord, Father God, to let your perfect and holy will be done with us in our service, with the United States of America. Yes. Oh, Father God, have mercy on the homeless today. Yes. Have mercy, oh, Father God, on those that need food and shelter and raiment today. For these blessings you have blessed us with, yes. oh, Father God. Oh, and we can't so thank you enough for it. Thank Continue Jesus. now to pour out your pa ha, da, 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 power, you, glory, and honor upon us that we can lift you up through our service. In Hallelujah. Jesus' name. In Jesus. Ha, da, 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 amen. Ha, da, 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 amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for that powerful prayer. Yes. We are blessed. Thank you, sis. We are amen. blessed. We are truly blessed. Right now, we're going to go into our testimonies, singing, whatever God has laid on your heart, scripture reading. Um, now is your time to... Um, Participate if you choose to. God bless you. Amen. Um, anyone unmuted right this time? Definitely go right ahead. Um, uh, I'll start it off then, sis. I have one verse from Psalm 138. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Yes. Amen. 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 And I would like to also add my scripture as well, since I'm already unmuted. unmuted. Um, another favorite passage of mine coming from Romans 
chapter five, starting at the verse six. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's me. <laughs> for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God command, commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And I thank God for his grace and his mercy every day for saving me. Didn't wait till I got it right because he knew I would never, but he made the first step and showing his love on the cross, dying for me. And I'm so glad, I always say this, I'm so glad that when he knocked, I opened the door and I let him in. And I thank God for salvation. It is indeed a privilege to be saved, so privileged to be saved. And I'm, I'm grateful every day for what he has done for me and what he continues to do for me and my family. God bless. God bless. Anyone else would like to share this morning? God bless you. You can unmute yourself. I'm going to call, go right ahead. I think that's Sister Davis. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Okay. Come in my room. Come in my room. Jesus is my doctor. Oh, yes, he is. He writes my prescription. He gives me all my medicine in my room. Mm -hmm. Come in my room. Mm -hmm. Come in my room. Jesus is my doctor. He writes all my prescription. He gives me all my medicine in my room. Love you. Amen. Amen. He's got it all, Sister Davis. He's got it all. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. God bless. Amen. 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 I enjoy the songs. Keep singing. Keep singing. Sister Smith. Welcome back. I hope you had a good trip. God bless you this morning. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Yes, he is. God says, when the wicked eat my enemies came upon me and eat up my face, they stumbled and fell. For a whole should camp against me, my heart shall not fail. Amen. The wall should rise up against me. And this I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Yes. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temper. Amen. First of the Psalm. Upon the mountain, over the hill. Down in the valley, I got to do God's will. God's been good to me. Yes, he has. He brought me out of my sin. And I'm doing my best, breaking in. Amen, amen. After a while, it'll all be over. Oh, yes, it will. And I won't. Afterward, we no more. You know, the hat that I had still been told. I did say my dying soul, and I'm doing my best, waking in. Thank God for that. on my heart, because truly I'm doing my best to make it in. Amen. Love y'all. Love you too, Sister Smith. Welcome back. God bless you, hon. God 
God bless you. Lady Cassie, you don't get my letter. Did we get your letter? Yeah. Um, Pastor yes. John? Yes. Yes, Sister Smith, we got the letter. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear? You got my letter? Yes. Yes, they get it. Oh, all right. God Love bless you. Sister. Thank bye you bye. so much, Sister T Sister Smith. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I see a um de uh Deacon Sproul, you're unmuted. God bless you. Yes. Good morning. How are you? You hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you and we're doing just fine. God is good. Yeah, I'm just glad to be here. Glad to be a witness for the Lord. Amen. Amen. A witness for the Lord. I thank the Lord for being here today. I thank the Lord for his blessings, his mighty work. Hallelujah. Thank you for the healing of the um, junior on, uh, I guess, on Monday. He had went to the hospital and he had got a kidney like a slip. And his leg was pulled up and I, you know, prayed and prayed that everything be all right, that he wouldn't linger in the hospital. So he had came home, uh, he came home on uh, Thursday in the hospital. And they all continued just to pray for Junior uh, the Squire. You know, Junior the Squire. He's uh, had a kitten like a, a Sister Smith and you know, they're not doing too good. Just pray for him that he'll continue to walk and they, all this children go down and they speak and they continue to, you know, praise the Lord. And I thank the Lord for he know God and you know, to get God healed him. And he'll continue to hear these stick with the Lord. You know, don't doubt it. I thank the Lord today. I thank the Lord for my family for being all well. And the Lord keep them, hallelujah, in, the, in his care. Amen. We all in his care. Thank the Lord for being in his care. He's got the arms all around us. Amen. Hallelujah. I be in his care. And I thank the Lord that if we be in his care, he will take care of us. And I yes, he will. Today. I want to read this scripture, the 85th chapter of uh, Psalm. <clears throat> Lord, thou had been favor unto thy land, and thou had uh, brought back the captives of Jacob. Though thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people, thou hast covered all thy sin. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath, and thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness, fierceness of the uh, anger, and turned us to God, to our salvation, and called them the anger toward us to cease. Amen. Amen. We call the anger to cease. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And he calls everything to cease and be all right. You know, for in my father house, there are many mentions. Hallelujah. If he hadn't told us so, hallelujah, he wouldn't say we he wouldn't know hallelujah to it. There are his teeth in the back. For me, hallelujah. Amen. For yes, there is. Thank you, Lord, for the gentleman, hallelujah, as I prayed for hallelujah. And thank me, hallelujah, for praying for him. So sometimes he called me himself, you know, without, you know, the mother in the pain. You know, he called me and uh, talked with me, you know, to get uh, confident to have faith to continue you know, to praise him and continue to walk my faith and Amen. don't lose confidence and don't be, lose faith. Hallelujah. And I thank the Lord for that, you know, the little confidence and just me, hallelujah, just talking to him to encourage him. And Amen. another lady I talked with, uh, Sister Ann, that I brought to church one time with me, you know, and I encouraged her, you know, and she wasn't feeling to do it yesterday, and I prayed for her. And, Amen. You know, morning she feel much better. 
Thank God for the hallelujah. That's to know that, you know, people can talk to you and you encourage them that they'll take on, you know, and believe, you know, that God will continue to do working out and you feel better. And yes. thank God. Amen. So I just hope that they can be on the earth that send some just be sent to my own day and have comfort with it. You know, this God we serve, he works. That's the kind of God we serve. You know, Amen. hallelujah. We do anything. We believe and have faith and serve him. Hallelujah. That's why everybody on earth, you know, you do some somebody they looking for some kind of reward, but hallelujah, anyhow, you know, that continue to trust and hallelujah and pray for me that I may have faith that continue to believe. When I tell them something that God is able, not me, but God is able, just trust him. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to call you a little later, um, Deaconess Sproul, to get um, the person's name. Okay. So we can put them on our prayer list and we can um, let our prayer warriors know as well. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I'm going to call on um, our dear sister Chloe and brother Austin this morning. Jeremy 9721. Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to act in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord. Also in Horeb, ye provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of covenant which the Lord made with you, so I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights, and neither did eat bread nor drink water. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Hmm. And then was written according to all the words, which the Lord spake with you in the mount of the midst of the fire, in the day of the assembly. And it came to pass to the end of forty days and forty nights, that the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, even tables of the covenant. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence, for thy people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They are quickly to turn aside out of the way, which I command them. They have made them a molten image. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiffened people. Mm -hmm. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. Now make of the nation mightier and greater than they. So I turned and came down from the mount, and mount burned with fire. And, table, and the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. And I looked, and behold, ye have sinned against the Lord your God, and had made your molten calf. Ye had turned aside quickly out of the way, which the Lord had commanded you. And I took the two tables, and cast them out of my two hands, and break them before your eyes. Hmm. I fell down before the Lord, as at the first forty days and forty nights, I did not eat bread, nor night, nor drink water, because all their sins which ye sin, and doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of the anger, and how displeasure wherewith the Lord was brought against me to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. And the Lord was very angry of Aaron to have destroyed him. And I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. And I took your sin, the calf, which ye had made, and burned it with fire, and stamped it, and ground it very small, even until it was as small as dust. And I cast the dust thereof into a brook that descended out of the mount. Amen, Chloe, for reading God's word this morning. Thank God for grace and mercy. Amen. God bless you. Uh, Brother Austin? <coughs> Psalm 19, 7 and 8. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. 
The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Amen. God bless you both for reading God's word this morning. Amen. I'm going to call on our um, sister Ethel Blunt Kennedy. Good morning. I hope all is well. Forgive me. Good morning. Jump from in and out of screen. First, give an honor to God just ahead of my life, Pastor John, First Lady Sister Jackie, all the mothers of uh, Zion yes. and Mount Moriah family. Amen. And to the precious, the precious children, every time I just keep hearing the angels, Chloe, just keep reading God's word. Amen. Uh, it's enlightening, believe it or not, for those who don't know. True. The spirit of God. Amen. Is upon her in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for Mount Moriah. I thank God for the children of Mount Moriah all over the world in the homeless. Uh, I thank God for another day that was not even promised to me and to us. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving me reassurance in your word to trust your word Amen. and believe you in spite of what the enemy says about that Delta virus and that coronavirus. Back in the day, in Jesus' time, they didn't have shots, but they had the word and they trusted him. The Amen. Lord said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Thank you, Lord. I have a Psalm uh, 5, 1, 2, 1, 5, 5, 1, Psalms 5, 1, 2, 2. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You. Give ears to my word, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto my Hearken unto the voice of my cry, and King, and my God, for unto thee will I pray. One more, mm -hmm. verse three. My voice shall thy hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. Amen. Truly, I thank God for this the psalm of the words, because like I said, the enemy likes to throw things in your mind and put mm -hmm. fear in but God did not give me the fear, spirit of fear, but of a sound Amen. mind and Amen. peace. To God, I give you the glory. I thank you for the word. Amen. I thank you, dear Lord, for each and every day. Thank you for my family, my grandchildren, my blended family. Thank you, dear Lord, in spite of. Thank you, Lord, for my husband. I stand and I'm missing the gap. Only God knows yeah. your inner part, what you're going through. Sometimes you can't speak it, mm -hmm. but you can show, talk to Jesus. Amen. He's just a breath away. Yes, he is. And I, I truly thank you. And I love y'all saints. I love them. I love him. I love them. And I love y'all. I love the mothers, all of y'all. In Jesus' name, may continue to God to take thank you, you higher yes. and strengthen all of y'all. In the mighty name of Jesus. And again, I thank you, Lord, for bringing me back to thank you, Jesus. Mount Moriah, to the true church. Hallelujah. To hear your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. You, he said your mercy endures forever and yes, ever. Yes, it does. And I thank you. I'm going to get off now because I it's love all you. Right. In Jesus' it's name, right. I give you the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 He's, wor he's worthy of the praise, sis. Thank you. Thank you Jesus. He, nobody knows but you and Jesus. And that's, Hallelujah. The, that's all that matters. <laughs> Hi, shout out, Bosiah. Thank you, my sweet. Yes, you. Sometimes you wish people, you may share... Yeah. And they might not get it, but that's all right. You know, yes, um, God, I think that this earlier song that was played, I must tell Jesus. Yes. Sir. All yes, sir. of my trials. God bless yes. you. Love, love you all. He knows. He knows. He knows. God bless you for sharing. Love you this morning. God bless you. Anyone else this morning? I see our sister Moore. Good Brother morning. Ralph is awesome. Brother oh. Ralph is awesome. Uh, thank you, hon. I got to start reading my chat box. Yes. I'm going to call on Brother Ralph, and then I'll call on, on you, Sister Moore. Be ready. Good morning, Brother Ralph. Uh, good morning to, to everyone. I don't have a <clears throat> Bible verse, but every day is a Bible verse with me because <laughs> God walks me through, <laughs> and he takes care of me. He takes care of me and my family. Yes, he does. And <clears throat> when I lay down at night, I give him the praise and the honor. He wakes me up in the morning. Amen. And all this is not possible without God. Amen. And people have to realize that 
they have to depend on God to do these things. Yes. And because otherwise you can't do it by yourself. You can do whatever you think you're doing by yourself, yes. but God plays the part in there. That's right. And so this is why I, I, uh, I, I thank him so much how he looked after me. Yes, Lord. Um, day by day, day by day. And I constantly praise him all day, all day long. That's all I right. praise him for how he takes care of me Thank and you. my family because I have a, a, a family, grandkids and stuff. They like to travel, but God take them and he brings them back Amen. safe. Thank and you, so I, I, I thank you, God. Amen. Thank, thank for that. Amen. So that that's that's my little testimony. A little. I, I didn't <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't read it out of the Bible. That's but all right. It to me. And, Amen. And this is how I present it. So thank you all. That's all right. We are a living testimony. Yes, we are, Brother Ralph. And you should know. Yeah. You've been around, I always say you've been around a long time. Yes, so ma'am. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> Pearls of wisdom. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you so much, Brother Ralph. God bless you. Right. Sister <laughs> First Lady. Yes. Sister Moore has nothing to say. This okay. Morning, so we got Sister Cynthia and then Sister, is it Angeli? Angela? Angela. Angela afterwards. All yes. right. God bless you. Then I'm going to call on our um, dear. Elder Roy Stewart afterwards, sis, after Sister Cynthia. So yes, go right after Angela, I should say. Go right ahead, um, Cynthia. And Ms. Oh, right order. Okay. Okay. Um, I just want to give God the glory for um, and thank him for his grace and mercy and answering all of our prayers, no matter how small or how great it is. Um, the Lord helped. I want to thank God for my son-in-laws. God bless me with beautiful son-in-laws. Um, they, God helped us to get from Atlanta to Charleston and from Charleston back to Atlanta with a truck. Wow. Um, wow. One of my son-in-laws provided the truck. Another son-in-law came to load and unload. Um, another son-in-law did all of the uh, getting the house ready for Robin. Amen. Um, I just want to thank and praise God for all of those who helped, but most of all, for God, for God laying it on family to love family and take care of family. Amen. And also for the family of Jesus, the body of Christ. Amen. Um, that's um, that family to me is more important than any family. <laughs> but I just thank God that God laid it on our family to serve God, to love God, and to take Amen. care of one another. He praise said, "Be God. help us, help us one another." Praise and God. at my age, at age 70, I went to Robin's house to, mo to motivate her, um, to help her. I, did, I packed all of her kitchen, pantry, laundry room, living room, um, china closet, everything, and, and motivated her and her two children, and they got on the ball and did their part. All right. And, uh, my hat goes off to Robin because she <laughs> continued to press her way, didn't complain a whole lot. I thank God I didn't let her complain to me about, oh, I'm tired, I don't feel, but she stayed motivated, got all her packing done herself. Praise God. I want to thank and praise God because uh, we did, God answered the prayer. We didn't have any breakdowns. Praise God. Uh, no car, car trouble. <laughs> no, no you know, God just did it. Yes. And um, I just want to thank and praise God because he also allowed me to see the state that my, my granddaughter is in. So I'm asking God to continue. Um, I thank God she's on the prayer list. Amen. And God's going to continue to um, answer prayer, deliver, heal, and deliver. Yes, and he can. Yes, he can. Things. Yes, and he I, can. And I thank God that he's doing it. And uh, and I'm trusting him and I believe in him. And I'm not going to doubt him at all. It's going Praise to be God. Done. Praise Amen. God. God Amen. bless y'all. I love you. God bless you. Love Amen. you too. Thank Amen. you for sharing. Yes, we will continue Amen. to pray. The power of prayer. Everyone is a witness to that. The power of prayer. God bless you. Our sister Angela, good morning. Yes, good morning. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. It's good to see you. Yes. And hear you. <laughs> uh, so my testimony is um, the past three years have been really difficult for my family and I, which consists of my mom, 
um, who has shingles mm -hmm. and the permanent nerve damage uh, that shingles gives you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a 94 year old grandpa. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really hard for all of us to just find the strength to get through the day. There's just so much to do. There's, um, it, it, sometimes it gets overwhelming. There's been sickness, disease, death, financial issues. There's just been so much in the past three years within this little small family of only three people. And sometimes at the end of my day, I just sit on my bed and I'm like, how in the world did I make it through the day? Like, I can't even believe that I made it through the day. I was so tired, my energy was so low, but it was a miracle that I actually made it through the day and had enough strength. And I know my mom can testify to that too, where we just have days where you wake up in the morning and you feel so overwhelmed just sometimes by life and everything that's going on around you. Um, and the Lord really gives me strength personally, because it, it has to be a miracle. It can't be anything else. And I'm telling you, these are days where there's no coffee and no Red Bull or anything like that. And, <laughs> and I magically make it through the day, sometimes on two hours of sleep. Wow. Like recently for the past couple of months, I would say I've only been averaging four hours of sleep a night. And um, it's, it's just a miracle the strength that that he gives me to be able to do everything perfectly yes. and make everyone around me happy. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for sharing. There are some people right here that you see understand exactly what you're going through. And we have a, an example of that, our dear sister Carolyn, who is taking care of her mom, who has Alzheimer's. And unless you've been in someone's shoes like that, you really don't understand it. It's, yes, it's physically, emotionally, financially, and sometimes spiritually draining. But yes, you know your source of strength and you continue to look to him and he will continue to do what he does best. Get us through the day, not just to get us through, but to get us through with joy and just peace of mind, knowing that God is in control of everything, of everything. So you're in the right place, hon. You're in the right place. You're among so many witnesses. We understand and we will continue to pray for you, your mom, your grandfather, whoever was under your roof, um, to see and know that it is God. And he will continue to keep you and guide you. God bless you. Thank you so much for sharing. You didn't have to do okay. that, but somebody needed to hear that. Thank you. You're Thank not you. alone. See, that's, that's, that's Satan tries to get us in a bag. That, oh, oh, nobody cares. Nobody knows what you're going through. That may be true, but you know who, who, who knows and cares. And so it's nice to share. Now you have not only yourself praying, but a crowd of people praying for you, rallying for you. You're going to make it. You're going to pull through. God bless you. Thank you so much. You didn't have to share, but God bless you. You see, the power of testimony. I tell you, it could just uplift you and let you know that you're not by yourself in this. God bless you. Thank you so much. Our um, dear Elder Roy, just wanted to hear from you this morning. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Jackie. Uh, I know over the past several months, we've been talking about the light of the world in our Bible study. But some time ago, God gave me a little song, and maybe I could sing a little, little bit of that. All right, now. It has to do with a Jesus has to do with uh, him being your guide and light. Jesus is my guide in light. Oh, yes, he is. Especially in my darkest night. Mm -hmm. No matter what's your plight, I won't be a fright. 
for Jesus is my God in light. All right now. You know, no, no matter how dark it seems, how dark your situation may seem and you don't see no way out, just look for the light. He'll lead you out. Yes, he will. He'll guide. He'll protect. He will deliver. That's my encouragement this morning. Thank you, Sister Jackie. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was the icing on the cake, Elder Roy Stewart. God bless you. That seems to be the consensus of the this, this, this service. That no, matter what, no matter what you're going through, God will see you through. And everything has a purpose, a reason, and a plan. Just trust him. Thank you all for participating in our testimony um, service. I don't hope I didn't overlook anyone. Again, another opportunity. If you want to unmute yourself, you can. We're going to go right into our other part of the service. Just give me a moment to um, prepare the music. I got sort of like involved in the testimony. I <laughs> forget that I have to do the music here, but God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The power of the cross. On a hill far away stood the old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Trophies at last I I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. You did something that was so marvelous that it's mind blowing to us. How you decided to shed your blood so that we can walk in the newness of life and have the opportunity to lift our hands and say, Abba Father. Oh, oh, oh that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me
Prayer by our elder, Earlene Stewart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, oh God, our Jehovah Jireh, our provider, oh God, our God of love, yes. grace, and mercy, Lord. Lord, we can sum it up by just saying, Lord, you are our everything. You are our all in all. We thank you today, Lord. We thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for your love, for your love, oh God, yes. hallelujah, is the reason yes. why we're here, because Lord, you sent your son Thank that you. we might have a right to the tree of life. Oh Thank God, you. who died on the old rugged cross, yes. oh God, and we thank you, oh God, Jesus. that love, oh God, which, oh God, beyond is beyond our understanding. Oh, yes. We thank you, oh God, for you are good, you are merciful, you are kind, oh, you are our everything, Lord. Oh God, and as we come today, oh God, to partake of your word by yes, John, Lord, we pray, Lord, that your anointing would rest upon him, Lord. Hallelujah, you. as he, oh God, gives to us what you have given to him to give to us, Lord. Hallelujah, and we say, like Samuel said, Jesus. speak, Lord, Jesus. for your servants hear it. Yes, for in Jesus' Hallelujah. name we pray, Thank you, amen. 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 We, we thank God for all that has been said and done thus far in the service. The table has been set and the word is is ready to be offered. We thank and praise you, dear Lord, my God, for all of the testimonies, all the songs, that have gone up, I pray, Lord Jesus' name. The word this morning, as the title tells us, the power of the cross. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. We've been studying on our uh, Wednesday evening Bible study. The lessons have uh, come to the point of 
where Jesus uh, sacrifices himself on that cross. And uh, sometimes as we read scripture, as we cover uh, um, a lesson in Bible study, uh, scripture that we've read time and time again, sometimes we need to um, spend a little bit more time on it in this respect. Um, it came a time when it was time for Jesus to offer himself up. And as many times as Jesus mentioned to his disciples what was going to have to happen to him, um, they did not want to exceed, uh, accept it or receive it, especially Peter. I remember one time Peter said that that's not going to be unto you, Lord, uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> to the point where Jesus had to rebuke Peter and say, get thee behind me, Satan. And that's because that's something that he had to do for us. And yeah, Satan did not want Jesus to die on a cross because he knew that that was going to reconnect God to his creation in a way that would allow us, allow us to have access to the throne of grace that we, that we now have today. And so as Jesus uh, goes through what he had to do to uh, bring us into that saving grace for his father. Every step that he took from the moment that he was in the garden and betrayed by Judas and no doubt anguish came upon the disciples and that's why they scattered for fear. But all of that was to have to happen because Jesus did not want them to fight for him to stay alive. You remember what happened with, once again, one of Peter, uh, one of Jesus' disciples uh, that took up the sword, I think that was Peter again, and, and smote one of the servants of the high priest, smote off his ear, cut off his ear. Jesus said, put up the sword. I'm paraphrasing that, but, you know, I have to do this. I have to do this for humanity. I have to do this. And so at that point, Jesus surrendered himself because he said, no man takes my life from me. If I don't give it up, no man is going to be able to crucify me or take control over me unless I allow it to be so. And with that, Jesus allowed the soldiers to arrest him and to start him on that road that was to lead to Calvary. And every step of the way that he took, it was for us to be redeemed back to his father. It just shows you the depth of sin. It shows you also that separation that we created back in the garden when we were disobedient from God. How much it is going to take for us to be reconnected back to God. All of the suffering he would have to um, endure for us. Uh, and, and it all started with the physical. Then it went into the emotional, then it went into the spiritual, and lastly, it came into the uh, physical. All of these different areas of humanity, Jesus was going to have to go through for you and I. It's also to help us to understand that the disciples at this time were confused because, once again, they, they, they were hoping that Jesus, because of all that he had done and shown them, his power, his abilities, his word was just captivating that he was going to do something for his people, that's the Jews, or for humanity, again, not knowing or understanding what they were thinking at that time, other than they knew that he had it all. But now he's being abused and eventually going to be taken away from them. All of this, once again, was beyond understanding. He's before the authorities of the time. And best, uh, the, the disciples have fled. Peter decides to stay around, but he's staying around in fear. And we know he denied Jesus the three times that Jesus said he was going to deny him for lack of power to stand up. But all of that was to show Peter something about himself. He did not have power to be able to stand up as he might have wanted to stand up. 
So he too is still confused. Why is my Lord allowing them to abuse him? I know what he can do. I know what he's capable of. So even though I can't do it, why doesn't he stand up and put these people down? It's because, once again, his whole point and purpose was to die. And that's for you and I. Well, we know the rest, which was the abuse by the whipping, the torture all night long. The insults that were thrown at him. We're talking about God here, right? The insults. You know, we get insulted because somebody steps on our toe. They were insulting him, spitting in his face, ripping off parts of his beard. Just total abuse of God. And then eventually whipping him all night long. I mean, whipping and pain. We would have never been able to survive that. Forget about going to the cross. We wouldn't have survived the whipping. His flesh being torn from him, blood gushing out, we wouldn't have been able to survive that. But he had to die. He couldn't die by just getting whipped. He had to die on the cross, the symbol at that day and age of someone who was guilty of a crime. In this case, guilty of our crime. So he gets tortured, he gets whipped, he gets nailed to the cross. He suffers for six hours on this cross. No doubt they are grieving beyond anyone's grief can possibly be. Still confused as to how would he have allowed something like this. And that's why he said, on the third day, I'm going to rise again. He told him all of this information. But his disciples, when the third day came, They're still grieving, and I guess it's Peter's house, but Mary Magdalene is coming to the tomb. They roll a stone in front. She's not even thinking, how am I going to roll the stone? She's just thinking, once again, I've got to go to minister to my Lord, because they didn't have a chance to anoint the body and do the things that they normally do. And why would someone do this, not knowing that how they were going to be able to do, uh, uh, even get to the body? Well, when God has done something for you that he did for Mary Magdalene, do you remember what God did for Mary Magdalene? God took out seven devils for Mary Magdalene. And when you realize I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this. And let me tell you something. That's an experience beyond anything that this side of life can offer. Demonic interruption of your life. She had seven. Mary Magdalene did not have control of her life. The demons did. But Jesus comes and delivers her from this. She's in a state of mind. of total grief as to what they did to her Lord. She's not caring about the stone being so big, her being a woman and whether I can move it or not. Her grief was so strong, it was just to minister in any capacity possible because she knew what God did for her. What has God done for you? Has God done anything for you? Can you remember? Don't look at what the situation is now in your life. Has God ever done anything for you? Well, if he has, remember now, if he did that, don't you think he can do whatever it is that you're going through now, deliver you from whatever it is that might be oppressing you? Because guess what? There is a time period in all of our lives whether it be a test of our strength in the Lord, our faith in the Lord. But there's a time period for all of us to show God, Lord, you've done a lot for me. Here is now my opportunity to do something for you. But yet we want to run away from this opportunity. God says, look at what I have been to you and what I have done for you. Can you not extend yourself a little time? Remember what Jesus says 
with those that came on the other side of life. And Jesus tells them that when I was sick, um, you came to me. When, when I was hungry, you fed me. <clears throat> when I was naked, you clothed me. And, and, and so they asked, well, Lord, when do we do this? When did we do this? And he said, when you do it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. Whether it's a member of your family or whether it's a friend or whether it's a neighbor and you're doing a good work, you're doing it unto the Lord. You're doing it unto the Lord. This is a precious time. Man might not look at it that way, but God is looking at you right now as serving him in a special time period of your life for someone else. You're taking the time out of your life for someone else. And God is well pleased. Remember now, we're living this life. We, we're saved, right? And we're living this life not the way we want to live it, but be the way God wants us to live it, to glorify him. See, it's not about us anymore. It's about what we want it. But now that you got saved, it's not about what you want. It's about what does God want from me that I can glorify him. And if your mindset is on that one accord with Jesus, watch out. Because there is nothing he will not do for you. Make ways for you out of no way. Open up doors for you. Touch the hearts of men your behalf. Give, give you favor. Favor with man. Those that want to give you a hard time, he moves out of the way. Oh, he, there are so many ways God will bless your soul in your everyday living if you would just do what he will. All because of the power of the cross. So Mary Magdalene, she is grief stricken beyond words. That's why she's come to anoint Jesus's body. And when she doesn't find him, she is even more troubled. She's not thinking about what Jesus said in the third day, I'm going to rise again. She's thinking someone stole his body away. Uh, and there's a, a, a someone in the garden and she, she beckons to him, sir, sir, you know, uh, if you know where they sent him, please tell me. <laughs> because she is so grief stricken. And then when Jesus says, Mary. And then she realizes, <laughs> soon as he called her name, just like soon as he calls your name, you're going to know it's God. You're going to know it's him wanting to talk to you. One-on-one, one-on-one. As on one. On one. soon as Jesus says, Mary, she, she says, my Lord. And she wants to hold on to him. And as we did this in Bible study, the whole thing is she was clinging. She didn't want to, I let you go before. I'm not letting you go now. That's when Jesus said, don't hold on to me. Don't hold on to me. I'm going to, uh, I haven't gone yet. To be glorified. I haven't gone yet to be glorified, but tell my disciples where I'm going to meet. So go your way and tell them. I haven't left yet. And then that's when she moved on to do just that. See, when you've been delivered as Mary Magdalene has been delivered, you have such a, a hunger for God, such a desire to want to just be in his presence, doing his will with your life as much as you can. It's all because of the power of the cross. Jesus says in his word, in First Colossians, chapter 19, no, chapter 1, Verse 19 through 23. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, 
by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him. I say whether they be things on in earth or things in heaven. See, we don't realize that just things down here on the earth, it shook up heaven. And that cross that he was nailed to reconciled everything back to the way that it was. And Jesus goes on to say, or his word goes on to say, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you, you and me, holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. That suffering on the cross, that death, that horrible death on the cross was so powerful. What he did was so, it, it looked like, yes, it looked like defeat to everybody. It looked like defeat. But it was the power of God in action that saves humanity. And that's what God wants us to reflect on, what he had to go through. So when you are going through, you understand that for Christ I live and for Christ I die. Because every day is not going to be what they call a good day. It's not going to be, as they say, peaches and cream. You know, they're going to be some stumps some bruises. That doesn't mean God has left you. That means that we're still alive here on the earth. Things we have to overcome, things we have to do according to his will and not ours. If our mind is stayed on him, he said he would keep you in perfect peace. Don't let the world tell you or dictate to you what you should be doing. Let God be the one, because he's the answer to all things. What? The omega, alpha and omega, the beginning and the end? Sayeth the Lord. And so God wants us to recognize and realize that that cross, yes, is not a defeat. It's a victory beyond words in every area of our being. Our conscious, con conscious, conscious life. In our unconscious life, when we lay our head on our pillow at night, if it wasn't for God overshadowing us, do you realize the enemy is always working against us? Always. There's no sleep with the enemy. There's no vacation. There's no time off. That's why the Bible tells us to always uh, be prayerful uh, at all times. I remember on a couple of occasions, I'm sleeping in the middle of the night, and I'm awakened by the fact that I cannot talk. I, I literally, I tried to, I could not talk. I felt this presence on the side of my bed, like someone standing there. Well, I had my eyes open, and I did not see a physical being, but I felt a presence standing right next to my bed, and I could not talk. And Jesus spoke to my mind and said, call my name out in your mind. And I just started saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Je and as soon as I said that, Jesus, Jesus, it came from my mind into my lips, into my mouth. And as soon as I was able to say it out, Jesus, as soon as I said, Jesus, boom, it was gone. So God, night, day, anytime is out there to protect you from the enemy trying to work things, wickedness and evil against us. Amen. So it's up to us. It's up to us to stay in constant contact and connection with God so that, once again, God will be able to deliver you in your hour of need. Colossians chapter 2. 
verses 13 through 15. Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and it took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. That's the law. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphant over them in it. By dying on a cross, he defeated everything. Everything was defeated on that cross. Another scripture I want to read for you is Ephesians. And I want to start reading this. From verse 19. Well, uh, hold on a second. Second, no, no, no. Second, yes, second Ephesians. Let me start at verse 11. Second Ephesians. Verse up, starting at verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, those that's the Jews in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall or partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances that's the Ten Commandments, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace between us and his father, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which are afar off and to them that were not. For though for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. All of this was because of the power of the cross. The power of the cross. So Jesus bore his cross. He knew what he had to do and he did it. Was it easy? No. But he knew if he did not do it, humanity was not going to be reconciled back to his father. Humanity was going to be in a state of being lost forever. The job was, was large. It was huge. You have jobs for Christ. Work that you're doing for God. Easy? No. It's not easy. But God is with you. He will not ask you to do something without him helping you to do it. Because guess what? We don't have the strength to do anything without God. So if he doesn't help us, that strength is not just physical, it's mental, it's spiritual. Because, because when you're working for God and, and it's in a work where it's for others, you get worn out. Yes, you get physically, spiritually worn out. You get drained. But God is all powerful. Is he, how do you tap into that power? Prayer. You talk to God. You constantly talk to God, asking him for the help. When you feel yourself getting drained, short, patient, irritable, you ask God, Lord Jesus, I need you to tap into me right now. I need you right now to help me, Jesus, to overcome 
my weakness, because that's what it is, it's weakness, that the enemy is trying to take advantage of to make you look bad. But your God, my God, he has whatever it takes to get you to that place with him so that you can have the victory after victory after victory in whatever it is that you're doing. Amen? But then God also asks us this in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself. Take up his cross daily. Not just on Sunday. Well, this shouldn't be a cross coming to church. But daily and follow me. This is what Jesus is telling us. If you want to come after him, this is what you're going to need to do. So it should be no surprise to us what we have to do. If we're reading scripture and we have found out what it is saying about us and what we need to do, this boy, his cross, and he's telling us we've got to bear our cross. One last scripture to say, Luke 14, 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You cannot be a follower of Jesus if you are not willing to carry, to bear your cross for Jesus. Remember how he carried his cross for you, being whipped as he had been carrying it, carrying it, carrying it. Before he was nailed to it, he was carrying it, carrying it. He did that for us. So Jesus is now putting it back on us and saying, will you not bear your cross for me? When I was bearing that cross, you know, there's a lot to that cross. The main thing that we have to bear is suffering. Because when you're on a cross, it's, it's not a joyous time, right? I mean, it did not, Jesus did not enjoy being on the cross. But he took advantage of being on that cross. Well, how did he take advantage of being on a cross? Well, he still ministered while he was on a cross. He's dying and suffering on a cross, and he's still saving folks. You're going through by helping others or doing for others that can't do for themselves. And God said, I still want you to do, be that light to me, not just for the one you're helping, but others that see you helping. Just like I did on the cross. Remember the two thieves? So as we do for God, as we go through for God, remember that smile on the face can't just be an outward smile. It's got to be an inward smile. I don't have no inward smile to give. If it's not God, it ain't happening. Excuse the language it's not so it takes god doing something to us that that inner joy which is the holy ghost comes through amen so as jesus was still working as he was dying and suffering for you and i he wants you to do the same thing. so the question is will you will you now, this life, just like with Jesus, it did come to an end. His suffering came to an end. Your suffering, my suffering, one day will come to an end. What's going to be written on the report? Did you complete the job that God had for you? Jehovah saw what Jesus did and glorified it because he completed the work. And that's why Jesus says, all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Why? Because I completed the work. God needs you to complete the work, whatever that work is. Amen.
And it's going to come through the power of the cross. God bless your souls. I pray that you receive something from the message this morning. And at this time, we're going to ask our elder Roy Stewart if he would close us out in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne at this moment. Thank you. Thanking you, Lord, for service today. Thanking you, Lord, for the word. Thanking you, Lord, for all that you accomplished on Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for yes, dying for us and suffering for us. Yes, Lord. Not that you needed it for yourself, but Lord, you did it all for us. Thank you, and we thank you, Lord, thank you. in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, as we prepare to leave this service, we pray, Lord, that you would be with us once again this week. Yes, Lord. Watch over and keep us, Lord. Protect us, Lord, during these times of the rage of pandemic yes, and virus. Yes, Lord. Our loved ones, Lord, watch out, watch, watch over and keep them. And yes, Lord. Our elderly, Lord, watch over and keep them. Our yes, children that are unvaccinated, watch over, Lord, and keep them. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, we, yes, Lord. In the name of Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. These things we ask, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Years I spent in vanity and pride Carrying on my Lord was crucified Knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary By God's word at last my sin I learned then I tremble at the law I spurn Till my guilty soul imploring turn To Calvary Sing it with me There your mercy and your grace was free There your pardon multiplied to me everything Now I gladly know him as my king and Now my raptured soul can only sing for Calvary yeah. Yeah. There your mercy and your grace was free Salvation's plan 
Oh, the grace that brought it down to me Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span Calvary, yeah, yeah thank everyone for coming, for staying through the whole service. God bless you. Have a blessed day in the Lord. If you're able to stay a little bit afterwards for our after service fellowship, please do so. And as I often say, don't forget to read your word this week. Have a blessed day, y'all. God bless you again. Thank you for coming. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Thank you for sharing your testimonies. Yeah. Wonderful. It really it touched my heart. Be encouraged all, all those who shared. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. you all. We are all. You. Praying for you, Sister um, Ethel there. Praying for him. God bless Love you. you all. God bless you. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you all. Amen. God bless all. Thank you all for staying. How you doing, Mom? Mother Parks? I'm doing fine. All right. <laughs> Good to hear that. Yeah, so great, great. So yeah. grateful to see you. Good yeah. news about Robin moving in. God answers prayers. Thank, thank you. I know moving, I don't know what's worse, moving or unpacking, but God sees us through it all. <laughs> <laughs> amen 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 yeah. thank you for sharing brother ralph thank you as well sister angela yeah. for sharing we are praying for you amen and how did how did things go well with Missy? Croker? oh yes Missy. i don't know oh, how are you doing hon <laughs> i'm doing well um i had a meeting with uh my supervisor and he um, was extremely aggressive. He was yelling. He hung up. It was on like a, like this. Yes. It was uh, on Microsoft Teams. So like, it's like Zoom. He hung up on me and was like, well, we're going to um, meet with HR. So we have a meeting with HR on Thursday. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, Brother Ralph. Amen. Thank you, Dr. D. 